Hey everyone, this is a Patreon teaser, which means in order to get the full episode where Elizabeth and I do an even deeper dive on the Taylor Swift music that we know and love, you have to be a Patreon member. The link is in the show notes and it's patreon.com slash men I've tolerated pod. When you support the Patreon, you help me and our guests continue to bring you great content and you get to know my friends. One more announcement before I go to all the men I've tolerated before is having a little bit of a summer vacation. Don't worry, we will still be posting still comfy episodes that you may have missed on YouTube with Julia Washington from Pop Culture Makes me jealous on our main feed and there may still be a couple of episodes that relate to current events that will be posted for July and August. So make sure that you're still subscribed. Make sure that you're keeping up with us on social media and we will see you in September for some more regularly scheduled programming and episodes fighting everyday misogyny. Have a great summer and enjoy those movie reviews. we get back into Taylor Swift Patreon members, I do have to say that I am very surprised that Penelope has stayed quiet throughout this entire recording. I'm so glad. I am so glad too, because I am really worried about letting her out of the bedroom. Um, just because she's been in there so long and like, I don't know, like, are your feelings hurt? Are you going to be mad? What headspace is this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's why she's getting kitty cat edibles tonight. (laughs) Girl, I was gonna ask, have you tried cannabis? I haven't tried cannabis, but I'm gonna try the CBD chamomile shit. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I feel like at that. So I'm newly, like, in Mississippi, where weirdly it's legal, and in Tennessee it's not. So it, ugh, I had, if we're recording this, would be some great politics. I had the most hellacious time going through all the like hoops you have to jump through to be like, I need marijuana. Um, but finally, finally it happened. And I went to the dispensary last week and uh these guy like I'm pretty sure I saw a section that was like pet edibles that I've had dogs before that like needed it for sure. It, yeah. I just said what's happening with Penelope. I know, her panic like I was very well aware that my cat had noise specific anxiety. Mm-hmm. Whatever happened on Tuesday with these two strays in my yard getting into the fight just sent her to a fight. Sent her. And we've all been there with our anxiety, depression journeys where it's like, aha, I can no longer manage this. Right. I'm going to give in to that feeling and disappear. Yes. And now everyone in this house will be medicated and functioning because it's just, it, I'm sad because this is so funny and I'm going to say it on the Patreon episode. So when my sister and I, when we were talking about it the first day that it happened, I was like, what bothered, because she came out and she was really chill, but then she attacked me again because she didn't want me to leave the loft. Like I'm only mm-hmm. allowed to do things on her terms now, right. but there are no terms. <laughs> but she's a cat. Right. So she, so I told Emily, I was like, the, the thing about it is, is she's immediately regretful. Like as soon as the adrenaline leaves her body, she is very sad. Well, when I sent my mom the pictures of how beat up I am, she said, my mom immediately sent back, she's so sorry. Because, when, because when we were kids, my mom would have a mom meltdown and my sister and I would book it to our rooms and lock the door so we could scream. Um, pretend like we were going to cut ourselves with scissors. I did cut myself with scissors once, and then I went, ah, that's dumb. (laughs) I don't like being in pain. I really thought that that was going to be the adrenaline release. Mm -hmm. Um, And my mom would just come and scratch at our door, and like immediately, because my mom also has no boundaries. And she'd just be like, but I have been in Jerry's in the 
freezer and I just really thought we could watch Lost. I just thought oh, that maybe wow. you, you guys would want to watch Lost. And I and I was like, Penelope and Mom are the same. They have an adrenaline rush. And then they're immediately like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe that that's how I would act. What? Did you see that? Was that me? They're sexy babies. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> that's right. Oh, what is your favorite Taylor Swift album? Is it Midnight's? Oh, girl. I mean... What was it before Midnight? Real talk. Okay, so I, it's like asking me. It's like trying to. It's like lining up all of like the men you've dated and mm-hmm. like because it's a very complicated relationship because it I've really cried is. and laughed and loved and hate like done all the things and felt all the emotions to all the albums basically. But her, it, all of them except for the debut, that was not an emotional album for me. Right. And it was it, it was the start of something I knew that like I wanted to be a part of and had a lot of respect for. I knew that things were to come. Um, I would say now I'm like going, I have to visually get them in my head. OK, so I think the first song I had an actual emotional response to was Enchanted. Speak now. Um. Yeah. 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 I don't think of things in albums. That's not how me, my... Well, me either. So it's hard for me. Like, I have to make a mind museum to, like, categorize it. Because to me, I could just riff on, like, 90 songs right now. But, like... And it, and they're all from different um, always, albums. Yes. And they're all from different eras. And then you're like, I don't know. This is my favorite playlist. <laughs> right. Do you not have my spotify account that you listen to my personal playlist no no one does so, like i i can't tell you albums i could tell you like 12 songs that i like to listen to in a row the kesha albums honestly like i've only just now started going like okay an album dropped today i'm going to listen to right. it from start you to and finish. i are alike this way yeah because we an album up- has to just happen to yeah. me we were radio kids the, the radio just happened to you I still listen to all my shit on shuffling. That's right. You do. Because it's comfortable. I would be doing whatever I was doing in my life that day. And whatever music happened around me, I then encountered. Yes. To sit down and be like, today is the day I will listen to the entire Weekend album. Go. That is so unnatural to me. Mm -hmm. That I just, I feel like I'm not in the right frame of mind sometimes even starting it that way. So same. Totally same. So when people are like, what era are you? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like a uh, fall folklore. <laughs> I'm 1989, I think, pretty hardcore. Yeah, I'm probably lover. Oh, man. Okay, every time we say a new one. But I'm also a vigilante shit. Yes. Um, I, some of the more impactful, okay, this is a two-pronged answer. I saw her during the 1989 tour and it was fucking amazing and the only regret about that is that she had not even had the idea for all of my new favorite everything that has happened since then it was oh my god i literally am getting chills thinking about it uh to that point like there red was an album that like fell over me literally like the others i sought out and was like i love you like i'm oh she's one to watch oh my god i'm like into it oh i'm like a super fucking fan red hit me like a freight train in a way that like i don't even know what was happening in my life at that point in time maybe one of my two divorces but it it got in my bones and changed me like holy ground state of like there are so many moments on that album that like mattered so much to me like that that might it's so hard that might be my favorite i just remembered the line that i wanted to say on the real episode what casually cruel in the name of being honest oh that one oh that's look and i'll do a 10 minute like oh i can't even it's so huge like it's just such a moment it's so good because when you listen to the all too well 10 minute version i think which i don't do very often because when do i, I don't have either 10 minutes? But, but when i do when i like it's very on purpose i'm always like i want to hear this 
And the and it reminds me of the first time I heard it where, look, I've known Taylor for a minute. I don't know if you guys know. I've been listening. Like, you feel as a listener, as someone who's followed her career, like you're getting actual updates from a friend when these like huge drops come. So the first time I sat with this, I remember I was packing up my daughter's room, actually, um, when we were moving one of the like four times we've moved in the past three years. And so I'm packing up like baby things and hearing this just like she's just opening a vein on stage. Like it literally is just like, oh, my God, like this is so real and so big. And like, oh, my gosh, like, thank you for sharing this. Like, I just remember in the moment being so thankful that she would do this. and then you hear the whole thing and it's like that anyone could ever like be like it's just fucking corny i don't know i'm like you have not engaged accurately with this media this art i'm sorry because when i listen to the 10 minute version it makes me realize that all too well isn't about the relationship it's about the gaslighting that happened during the relationship which is why it matters that she and i think she knows that that she did release it and i'm so happy that she she knows the right time in her career to do the right things. And that's how they actually penetrate and mean something in the culture, I think. If you try to just dump it all, it's not as impactful. There's a reason that Woulda, Coulda, Shoulda was on the Midnight's 3 Like, she knows how to not steal her own spotlight in a way that, like, mad fucking respect. Like, that takes a lot of control. The casually cruel in the name of being honest have we not all just been sitting right there with that? Like that? Yeah. It's- because it's, it's, I was just playing devil's advocate. It's what you never thought about that. You just don't want to be challenged. I've had a man tell me, you just don't want to be have- challenged. Oh, hundred. Yes. That, that is just a few, it's poetic and it's putting words to a thing that we all have sat and struggled with and thought, is it me? Am I the pot? problem is me like is it like and that inversion of her own sort of like statements and the points that she's making it's it's fucking it is shakespearean brilliant it just i mean it really is whether you choose to engage with it on the level that's going to show you that is up to the audience and i totally respect that but and then if you've ever been in a narcissistic abusive relationship and honestly fuck we're gonna have to like I guess do an entire episode about the all too well 10 minute version. But when she goes, um, yes, please. it was rare. I was there. I remember it all too well. There are relationships that I have where I know that I was actively being gaslit, manipulated and abused. But I also know that some of them are my happiest memories where well, I'm like, Oh, I was there. By design. It is this moving goalpost. It is. Uh, it, okay so i remember you remember in psychology when like you were learning about everybody's sort of like intro to psychology you're getting all the info about like uh the experiment where um what type of like training system is going to work best uh for like rats or anything or whatever is it going to be always rewarding the good behavior is it going to be intermittently rewarding the good behavior is it going to be a mix of both like so i remember like i can i'm sitting in junior high school like i can see where i was with this test answering this question and it's this is taylor swift's entire career and like it's so wonderful to have someone like be able to sing so beautifully to such a horrifying truth but what always works best is and people will write in and be like no that's there's a real name for it. There is, I know. I'm not in the place where I can access that at this moment. But it is uh, on like an, an, an intermittent positive reward schedule. So what it is, is it's not always being nice back. It is keeping it random enough to keep you on your toes. And as a trainable animal, that is what will work every time. As someone who has been in a narcissistic relationship, when you actually realize that is the thing that's been happening, that is that moment in a horror movie where they're like, the phone call's coming from inside the house. Yeah. And you know what you just did? You just unraveled the abuse cycle. And I'm not saying that it's because the abuse cycle is bullshit, but whenever you see a graphic of the abuse cycle, it is always circular. 
Yep. I got that one from my therapist. Yeah. But abusers have been all like, oh, it's a circle. They'll know that if I'm a hot. Right. If they know I'm honeymooning them, then they know I'm going to punch them and next then love week. Them the- yes, absolutely. It's gaming the system in a way that's very natural for the age of information in which we live. And then people want to tell us, like, oh, no, it's not that deep. Like, men don't think that deeply about it. And it's like, abusers do because they're... They don't even know they do. It's totally... Look, it's like as deeply as other people are driving down the street that are trying to, do, like, eat healthy, but then they pass Burger King and they're like, oh, I love that original chicken sandwich. Like, how consciously that decision's being made is how people who suffer from narcissistic personality disorder are cruel and abusive to others. It is not a thing they have to sit down and map out and blueprint and story storyboard. It is something that happens like second nature in a way that like is almost undiagnosable. Can I talk about a song that is literally painful? So I'm driving. I got a day off on Friday because I didn't pass a test. So they were like, you can go. <laughs> so my friend and I are going to spend a day in yellow springs just having a fuck it friday because i'm off and she's off and i'm driving to her home it's a beautiful summer day i'm like gotta study up that era's tour playlist about seven minutes from her house marjorie kicks up you can't fucking listen to marjorie on a sunny afternoon trying and because you're forced to listen to it in the car when you're kind of just doing your listen of Evermore and Folklore, you're like, yeah, she's singing about her grandma, whatever. But then when she gets to like, you have to be kind, but not stupid. And I was like, oh, no, this is what my dead grandma taught me. And I'm it's crying like so in my car. Stuff. It literally is like it cuts to the qu- That's what I mean about like her directness. To the point where I'm like, do I bring a photo of Peg to hold up during Marjorie? (laughs) Do I just like... I mean, you do what the spirit moves you to do, and she'll appreciate it, but... Because there's that whole TikTok thing where conservative Christian white women are like, Taylor Swift is a cultist witch, and she's casting her witchcraft on you during uh, Willow, and she's inviting demons into her space or whatever. I hope she is. I hope she is. I'm going to bring crystals... And I'm going to charge them during Willow. I'm going to do the witchiest shit during Willow. And then also so probably really effective if I had to guess. And then if you, and then I told my friend Stephanie, I was like, you're going to have to TikTok it because tell you, tell you going to want to know that I charged my, my rocks during her power will. moment. I, she will. I love that fucking Willow song. I know. It's so good. Oh, God. It's so good. When... Uh, again this entire conversation will just be lines when she goes wreck my plans that's my man and i'm like yeah yeah